بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing on in our درس in fiqh basic fiqh that we all need to know coming from the book Umdata Fiqh قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى قال عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يبلن أحدكم في الماء يدائم الذي لا يجري ثم لا يقتصل من رواه بخاري ومسلم ولي مسلم لا يقتصل أحدكم في الماء يدائم وهو جنب وهذا لف لمسلم in this hadith the hadith of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه and may Allah be pleased with all the Sahaba to Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين in this hadith of Abu Huraira he said رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said one of you should not urinate in stagnant water that does not move then bathe in it and in another narration he said do not bathe one of you should not bathe in stagnant wire water and he is junub meaning he has uh, he is, requires ghusl because he has sexual impurities on him from ha either having sexual intercourse or from uh, you know, anything that requires ghusl which could be masturbation or any other thing that has caused the major discharge like uh, sperm and what have you. So in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, ooh, flying fish, mashallah. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made clear for us the hukum or the ruling regarding urinating in stagnant water and we benefit greatly from this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the hikmah or the reason the illa behind this hadith is mentioned by are is mentioned by the ulama, the scholars, with regards to uh, bathing in stagnant water and urinating in stagnant water. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, one of you should not urinate, and this is a commandment from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we should not urinate in stagnant water. That is what is directly understood in the hadith, and. Also, the Muslim, it is not befitting for the Muslim even to urinate in water such as this, as the sea water, as we are here at the sea, and the water is moving and it's a large body of water, but still it is not befitting of the Muslim to urinate in this water, but if one had to, out of necessity, then that would be permissible, and it would be permissible to bathe in this water or make wudu from it. However, in a small body of water, and water that is stagnant, that does not move, the Prophet ﷺ prohibited making ghusl and, and urinating in it. And some of the benefits that the Shaykh mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala, with regards to this hadith, is he said that this hadith illustrates for us the prohibition of urinating in stagnant water. And the Prophet وسلم, he said, لا يغتصل أهدكم في الماء دائم الذي لا يجري So the Prophet وسلم, made clear for us what is ma a dime. The Prophet وسلم, said, الذي لا يجري Meaning that it is stagnant water that does not move. So that we should not urinate in stagnant water and bathe in it. So that's one of the things we get from this hadith. And 
the Sheikh mentioned, and he said, and min babu awla, meaning, and 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 first and foremost, if the Prophet sallallahu prohibited urinating in this water, of course, first and foremost, just as much, it is just as much a prohibition to akramakum uh, Allah to defecate in the water. So the Muslim should refrain refrain from these kind of activities and the reason be, being as the ulama make clear is because of course it causes filth and if someone were to try to remove impurities or they were able, they were trying to bathe or they were trying to uh, make wudu to prepare themselves for the prayer they would actually uh, could be in a situation where they are increasing the filth on their body instead of removing impurities so that is some of the wisdom behind that also the spread of disease and the other uh, the other uh, harms of you know being bathing in stagnant uh, filthy water another benefit from this hadith is that the Sheikh he mentions that it is permissible to urinate in water such as the sea However, it is not befitting, as we mentioned, of the Muslim to do that, to, 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 uh, to urinate or defecate in the seawater or any water or a big lake or water that is moving, whether it be a river or what have you. That is not, as bef not befitting for the Muslim. And it shows the purity of Islam, that Islam encourages purification and em encourages refraining from that which is uh, considered filthy and disliked. One of the things the scholars differ over with regards to this issue is they differ over whether this nahi lil tahrim o karahiyah. They differ of whether the prohibition here of urinating or defecating in stagnant water is the nahi lil tahrim, which means that it is haram and it's impermissible totally or that is whether it's disliked so some of the scholars say that it is prohibited and in an, another group of the scholars of the fuqaha they say that it's disliked so uh, Imam Malik for example for Dhahaba Malikiya in ila annahu makru so Imam Malik or the Malikiya madhab anyhow they hold it to be makru that it is disliked to urinate in stagnant water but and 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 however that it is still permissible it's di but disliked the hanabila meaning those who follow the madhab of imam ahmed and the zahiriya those who take the the apparent meaning of the the from Ahla Hadith take the apparent meaning of the Nasus without looking for the necessarily the reason or the hikma behind it. They say that this is the prohibition of tahrim, meaning that it is completely it's haram to do so, to urinate or to defecate in the water. And then another group of the ulama they hold the view that if it is that it is haram if the water is a small body of water, a small amount of water, but if it's a large amount of water, then it is disliked. So it just goes to show us, without getting into all the debates of the ulama and their different arguments, it shows us the complexity of many of the issues in fiqh and why we should also have some sort of leniency and tolerance when we have a difference of, in, a, in opinion regarding fiqh issues. There should be a, a level of disagreement because a lot of times there are uh, there is a discor uh, discourse between the great imams. So what about us who are nothing? Who, who can only perhaps adhere to their madhab or who can only who might not even be able to go to the text. We need to have some sort of uh, uh, leniency with dealing with the differences in opinion. That does not mean all opinions are correct. We should still, if we have the ability to do so, look for the most uh, correct opinion that is in in more accordance with the evidence from the ahadith, from the ayats of the Quran, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and from the 
authentic sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So Imam Ali Bassam Rahimahullah Ta'ala His What he deduced from this statement He took the madhab that it is uh, Prohibited It is muharram To urinate or defecate, defecate And in, in stagnant water And bathe in it regardless of whether it is a large uh, body of water or it is a small body of water and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil